Recently, I've wild camped in all 15 of the national parks in the UK. And while it's still fresh in the memory, I thought I'd rate them. It's gonna go like this then. 15 being the worst, one being the best. And when I say worst, I don't mean they were all rubbish, but some were better than others. I've got this. About a year ago or something, uh, I made my own red wine. I bottled it. I did three bottles. So I thought, you know what? If I ever hit 100,000 subscribers, 500,000 and 1 million, I'll drink each bottle. And recently the channel hit 100,000 subscribers. And there we go. There's the bottle. You can see that drink at 100K. Bottled on the 12th of April, 2021. Let's get a booze on the go. It's only like 11 a.m. right now, so doesn't matter. I don't know if I'm going to drink all this bottle, but don't even know how to open a bottle of wine, to be honest. <laughs> Finally got into it. That cork was a pain in the ass. It's still in there. I've just got a hole. Look at this. It smells good. A little bit of cork in there, but it'll do. Guys, all right. Number 15, the broads, right? I want to preface this with, if you're from these areas and it might be your favorite national park, but this is just my personal opinion, don't take offense to it. So the broads national park in the east of England, just for me, it wasn't wild. I could, I could leave it at that, but I'll go into more detail. Just getting there, I had three places in mind that I wanted to camp and all three were a no-go because of how close it was to houses it was really just yeah you were so close to people and it just wasn't wild at all just getting there you know you go through a lot of towns villages so that alone kind of yeah uh, for me it was a, a no-go really i did it i got to the broad i think it's called little ormsby broad on this um decking like where you could i think it's like a bird watching post you could just i set my bivy bag up camped under the stars I had a good sleep actually, but it wasn't very wild. It's, it's not what you'd imagine a national park to be, but the food I cooked, it was local turkey and asparagus, if I remember correctly, and that was nice. But yeah, the, the location alone wasn't great, so that's why it's last. 14 is the New Forest National Park. It was only established as a national park pretty recently actually, so it's not very wild. And this is why the New Forest and the Broads are kind of last because it's just not that wild and you're close to the communities but it was beautiful in its own right ancient forest you know trees a few hundred years old so you're walking through you can hear the birds chirping it was amazing in that sense i cooked hampshire hazlet which is like a meatloaf and some local watercress it was really nice actually that i'm gonna try it again but the place that i set up my camp it was under this nice old oak tree and I'd definitely go again but because of just how non-wild it was that's why it's 14. 13. it's gonna rile up some of the yorkshire yorkshire people but the yorkshire moors it's just really bleak i could probably leave it at that i think me and yorkshire just don't get on plus my my jet boil that's when it broke and i was gonna I think it's called Monday hash or Sunday hash, I think it's called. Like corned beef with some potatoes. It was gonna be nice, but my gas broke, so I had to eat it cold. And it was just like, ah. Oh. But Yorkshire, it's nice in parts, but a lot of it is very bleak when you're on the, when you're on top of the hills. So yeah, we just don't get on me in Yorkshire. So this one really doesn't justify being 12, but the other one to 11 were kind of better than it. So this is, I mean, it doesn't really justify being there. But it's Dartmoor. It's really it's everything you want in a, a wild camp. It's out of the way, it's nice, it's wild, there are roaming ponies around, you know. But when the weather turns, it can be quite bleak. And it's quite similar to the Yorkshire Moors in that sense. Lots of history, you know, like Iron Age, burial mounds, all that good stuff. But yeah, I mean a positive, I cooked cider chicken, and that was one of the best dishes I cooked. Oh, it was great. I had a good beer as well. And cider as well. Oh, yeah, cider I had as well, which was nice. The place I camped was good. I had lots of cattle around me, but for its bleakness and 
one to number 11 are slightly better than it. Number 11 is Northumberland and this one would be amazing in summer like now, but it was really cold that day. So what I did, I, I think I parked on a main road and I trekked about four miles over a few farmers fences. And if I remember correctly, I got to a rocky outcrop and I just camped inside of it. It was amazing. I, you know, I made a campfire, just watched the sunset. I think I had, it was a local delicacy. I've I'd never had it before, heard of it, but it's uh, peas pudding and ham stotties. They were really nice. Like if you watched a football game on a cold day with one of them, oh, it'd be amazing. So I'd probably try that again. That is one of them though, where it's, yeah, really, really out the way. It was on the way to Scotland. It straddles the border, some of it. And yeah, it was a good one. If I had to rate it, I'd give it a good seven and a half. Number 10 is Exmoor National Park. And this one was really good. I enjoyed it, but the others were better. So, the, I mean, it was amazing. The place I camped, it was great. The contrast of the blue sky, the heather brush, and the, the roaming local ponies. There was just this black one that came slowly and just stopped right in the middle of my screen. I was like, this is the perfect shot, I have to get it. And I did, and it was great. The hill, I watched the sunrise, sunset, amazing. And yeah, relatively wild out of the way. I didn't, I think I seen like one or two on the way there. I'd go again for sure, but that's Exmoor. At number nine is a South Downs National Park. And this was just brilliant. I had the lighthouse behind me next to the cliffs with the English Channel behind me. It was beautiful, beautiful. One of the problems is it's pretty busy. You had Eastbourne one way, which is quite a busy coastal town, and you got Brighton, which is a quite busy small town slash city. So it was really busy. There was a coastal road along it, and there was lots of cars and vans parked up. So I had to set my tent up late. Other than that, it was beautiful. Really nice along the South Downs way. Um, I'd definitely go again. I got a bit of flat for it in the the papers in the news anyway it's because our camp's like right it's called beachy head and it's a massive one of the biggest chalk cliffs in the uk i think and i camp right next to it got a bit of flack but other than that it was beautiful At number eight is the yorkshire dales and i live pretty close to the yorkshire dales i really enjoy it it's quite similar to the peak district in that sense it's in parts wild in others quite not really and um, you go through nice little villages, just, you know, like the old brick villages, really nice. Uh, where I camped was at the bottom of a valley with a little stream going through it. Oh, it was really nice. I like that, actually. That was the second, yeah, the second wild camp. And you know, I was just starting out. It wasn't even supposed to be a series or anything. I was just, ah, I'll go to the Ocean Dales and camp. But it kind of sparked it after that video. That was it, you know. That's when I decided to do the 15. But yeah, I have fond memories of the Yorkshire Dales. I like it. Uh, I think I cooked a steak and some broccoli. At that point, I didn't actually think to cook a local dish or anything or have a local beer. It was just, I'll cook anything. But after that, I think someone left a comment in one of the, the videos saying, I wish I could remember who it was because thank you. It sparked such a good idea. So whoever it was, thank you for that. But Yorkshire Dales, love it. I'll go again. Number seven is the Peak District. And Peak District is, I'm literally here right now in the Peak District, where it all started. All this series started, right? Not in this location, but I don't know if you can see. Right, where are we, where are we going? Up there, on top of that ridge up there. Uh, that's where the series started. And yeah, I love the Peak District. It's got, it's not the biggest hills or anything. It's not the wildest, but it's my local and it has to be relatively up there. It's just nice, really nice. If you've never been to Peter Street, try it out. I camped next to its, when's it? I think it's called Shining Tor. And I, I camped next to a dry stone wall because bearing in mind it's January in the UK, freezing cold. So it was about minus two, minus three that night. I had all my wet, the, uh, warm gear on it was, it was good i think i cooked my special ramen noodle i added some like chili ginger garlic to it spicy sauce oh i uh fond memories of that video that was good um i love the peter trick some good wine i'm feeling a bit drunk i'm not gonna lie 
Ooh. So, we're getting on to the good ones now. Number six, Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park. So this is the first one I did in Scotland. And as you can imagine, yeah, Scotland is out of this world. Um, I didn't experience any of the midges. It was, I went in June. It, I should have been eaten alive, but I wasn't. I camped next to this little stream. You had Loch Lomond behind me on the what on the hiking. Wow, absolutely amazing. The hill was kind of like that. I was uh, I was a bit tired afterwards, but I set up camp next to the stream. The sound of water. I slept like a baby, and that's when I had my haggis, neeps, and tatties, the local dish with some Scottish shortbread, oh, amazing. Thinking about it, I should probably put this higher, but it's at number six and I love Loch Lomond, I'd probably go again. Number five is the Brecon Beacons in Wales and this was beautiful. Camped just above a, a lake, I think it was called Linny Fan Fac. I can't pronounce it, I'm not Welsh, but beautiful. Definitely go again. I've seen one or two people on the way in, quite a big trek in. Just, yeah, oh, I wish I could go back. I had Welsh rarebit, one of the local dishes of a nice beer it was. Yeah, what a place. I love the Brecon Beacons, it's so wild. Wild but accessible, which is important. Definitely go again. Number four is Snowdonia in Wales. So you've got two Welsh right next to each other. And it's just because it's so wild. The trekking for the Snowdonia was insane. I fell through lots of bogs. That was the most eventful hike towards my <laughs> wild camping location. Uh, I don't know if you remember it, you can go watch it back, but I fell, there was this bog. I, luckily I set my camera up to catch it. I was like, all right, this looks sketchy. In case I fall into a bog and drown and die, I'm gonna set it up just so people know what happened. <laughs> so I set it up and I was just like poof, right up to my thighs in just crap. I was soaked for hours after that, but I got to this. It was an old logging route, went around and it was just beautiful, picturesque lake. And that was amazing. Uh, the only downside, my gas broke. So it wasn't a downside. It actually turned into a massive positive and I'm so glad it happened. I made just a fire. I cooked some local Welsh, I think it was lamb, um, lamb steaks with some leeks. And I think I had some Welsh cakes afterwards and it was just beautiful. Cooked it on the campfire, watching the sunset. Amazing. We're on to the top three. I'm gonna refill this actually. We got enough of it. The Lake District is at number three and this was just after Storm Eunice and it happened in, when was it? January, February this year, 2022. Just all over the UK, it was quite a bad one. And the day after, oh, I had ants in my pants. I just needed to get out and I was just like, you know what, let's go to the Lake District. And it just snowed. It was such a cold, cold couple of days that was. So I got up into the lakes and I couldn't really make out where I wanted to camp because it was just full of snow and I couldn't tell, you know, the what the terrain was like. So I just set up on top of this hill and what a view it was. Just beautiful. So uh, I think I cooked Cumberland sausage, which is like a local sausage with some mash and onion gravy. Bangs and mash it is if you're, for sure if you don't know what that is. And just a nice, I think it was a beer. Yeah, the lake's beautiful, a nice snowy day. It looked great on camera, just editing it. I really enjoyed doing that. At number two, should we get the drum roll going? <laughs> so it is the Cairngorms. And I just want to say, if you live in Scotland, you're so lucky you have the Cairngorms, Loch Lomond and the Trossachs, plus Ben Nevis and all the other wild stuff. You're, you're pretty lucky, but this was amazing. I, I mean, it was along a, an old logging trail for three or four miles. And out of nowhere, this, this green lock, or I think they call it a lock hand because it's a small lock, an emerald green, just beautiful. It was quite overcast like it is today, but if it was um, really sunny, you, you would have seen all the way through that and it just would have been beautiful. So yeah, other than that, I was quite stubborn. 
because at the end of the the lock on there was a the beach where I wanted to camp and I was so stubborn I just like I said to myself I am camping there no matter what and the wind was just pounding so I had to like prop my tent up with rocks and everything other than that great I had a good sleep I had a, a an extravaganza of like Scottish snacks and food so I don't know where do I start uh, scotch cakes iron brew else come on i mean there's, there's so many others go watch it but it was brilliant i've really enjoyed it before we get into number one i'm gonna finish this i enjoyed that i'm officially drunk though 11 11 a.m so what a place this was pembrokeshire coast so the national park is the actual coastal area of pembrokeshire so it's the, that's when I said, there was a few comments saying there are so many other national parks next to the coast. I agree, but the National Park of Pembrokeshire is the actual coast, not the land, if you know what I mean. So that's why I said that. But it was beautiful. Our camps on the cliffs next to the, just the, the ocean. It was, oh, it was amazing. This is when, if you're from the UK, when the seasons change, it was definitely bitterly cold from January to kind of like middle of March, April-ish. And this is when I realized it started getting warmer and I, I could sleep without any warm kit on. It was beautiful. So I just woke up that morning and I went, where do I start? So I got there along the beach, a beautiful, beautiful day it was, along the beach, along the coastal path. And then I was greeted by some goats i don't know where they came from this must be a local farmer but they were just following me around the nicest plastic goats you'll ever meet i could stroke them they just wanted some water and food so they'd follow me i set up they were they went off on the cliffs just grazing and then when i started cooking my local mussels and cream with a bit like a french baguette so i was eating and they came over and wanted some of that so i just fed them a little bit it was great yeah so I made some friends there with some local goats and they started wrecking the tent. But ugh, what a beautiful place that was. I'm definitely going again. Pembrokeshire. Enjoyed it. That's the 15 national parks in the UK done in the space of like six months, which is pretty good going. On to the next thing then, I suppose.